Hello and welcome back. In this video I want to talk about something called the continuity equation. And the continuity equation is something that you've actually already seen in your everyday life. So if we take for example something like a garden hose, you know that when you place your thumb over the end of a garden hose that the water will spray out of the hose at a higher speed. And the reason that this happens is that the rate that the water is flowing into the hose has to be equal to the rate that the water flows out of the hose. So when you cover up the hose, the water has to spray out of the hose at a higher speed. Now what exactly do we mean by the rate that the water is flowing through the hose? Well, flow rate is equal to the volume of the water that flows into or out of the hose divided by the amount of time that it takes for this to happen. So basically what the continuity equation is saying is it's saying that the flow rate going into some hose or a pipe must be equal to the flow rate coming out of it. Now, ideally, we would like to come up with some type of formula that describes the speed that the water is flowing through a pipe. So to understand how we can relate the flow rate to the speed that the water is moving at, let's consider this example that I have shown down here at the bottom of the screen. So in this example, the water is flowing into the pipe over here on the left, and it flows into a pipe which has an area A1 and the water will be moving with the speed v1. Now, from here the water is going to move into a narrower pipe, and when this happens the water will speed up. And this pipe will have an area a2, and in this pipe the water will be moving with the speed of v2. So what I want to do is I want to use flow rate to come up with an, equ an equation that relates v1 to v2. So the continuity equation says that the rate that the water flows into the pipe has to be equal to the rate that the water flows out of the pipe. So the rate that the water is flowing into the pipe is equal to the, the volume that flows into the pipe, which is delta V1, divided by the amount of time it takes for that to happen. And this has to equal the volume of the water that flows out of the pipe, divided by delta T. So if we think about this, if I have water that starts out right here at the edge of this pipe, during some time delta T, the water is going to move forward a distance that is equal to V1 times delta T. And when this happens, there's water that's going to be behind that that's going to move in. So the volume of the water that's going to flow through this during a time delta T is going to be equal to the volume of the cylinder, this uh, dark blue cylinder I have shown over here. So that volume is going to be equal to the area of the pipe times the distance that it moves. And the distance the water moves is going to be V1 delta T. So this volume right here is going to be A1 V1 delta T and then the rate is going to be that divided by delta t. And we can see that these two delta t's will cancel. Similarly, uh, over here on the right, the rate that the water is flowing out of this pipe is going to be a2 v2 delta t divided by delta t. So what we can see is that a1 v1 will be equal to a2 v2. So basically the idea is that if you reduce the area of the pipe by a factor of two, the water is going to have to be move twice as fast. So one last thing I want to talk about before we uh, end this video. If we think about this last example, the water was moving at a relatively slow speed through this large pipe, and then when the water got forced into this narrower pipe, the water speeds up. So what that means is that in this region right here, where the size of the pipe is changing, the water must be accelerating. And according to Newton's law, when something accelerates, that must be due to a force. So if we consider this little dark blue section of water here, there are two forces that are being exerted on this. There is the force that is caused by the pressure over here on the right side that is pushing the water to the left, and then there's a force caused by the pressure on the left side that's pushing the water to the right. And the idea is that if this water is speeding up, then the pressure that is being exerted on this side has to be greater than the pressure that's being exerted on the left side. I'm sorry, on the right side. So what this means is that this area over here where the, pre where the pipe is thicker, the pressure must be higher. And over here on the right side, where the pipe is narrower, pressure over here has to be lower. That way the water will be getting pushed over to the right. So that's the basic idea here is that as the water goes from this large pipe to this narrower pipe, the water is being pushed, it's being shoved by the water behind it. And this means that the pressure over here is larger than the pressure over here. That's what's causing that to happen. 
So at this point, I think I'd like to end this video, and in the next video, we'll actually show how we can derive this formula for the pressure difference between these two ends of the pipe.